بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثيرا طيب بارك فيه والصلاه والسلام على اشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. We return to the introductory remarks of the path of the worshippers of Imam al-Ghazali and inshallah we'll reach the first obstacle the uh, it is described here again as the valley of knowledge and we'll comment on the notion of valley again so the uh, the wayfarer after Imam al-Ghazali mentions all these uh, obstacles in brief if he contemplates, he will find himself immersed in the ocean of divine mercy, bounties, protection, and support. He will then fear that if he forgets to be grateful to God for all these bounties, he will fall into disgrace and be removed from this exalted station which belongs only to those servants who are purified for God. Then the wayfarer will face the valley of praise, hamd, and gratitude, shukr. The, the notion of valley, again, the notion of, uh, as a translation to Aqaba, is, I think, the opposite of the, uh, the meaning in, uh, in, uh, in Arabic, of course. And uh, obviously, this is what, not what Imam Ghazali intended. When he mentioned the, uh, that the, uh, the hadith of the Prophet, which, which uh, um, some scholars, um, critiqued basically the chain of narrators but at any rate uh, the the uh, the meaning at least is absolutely uh, correct that uh, that paradise is uh, um, the way to paradise is uphill and the uh, the way to hellfire is downhill uh, we do say this even and the notion of aqaba the notion of aqaba uh, we do say in Arabic, وَقَفَ حِمَارُ الشَّيْخِ فِي الْعَقَبَةِ And the notion is that, uh, why would the, literally it says that the uh, donkey of the old man stopped at the Aqaba, and here is the translation, uh, so the donkey was going uphill, and the donkey gets, uh, got tired and stopped. So definitely we don't talk about, about the valley, we, do, we talk about, uh, uh, an uphill uh, movement. At any rate, so the wayfarer will face this uh, obstacle of praise and gratitude. When he leaves this uh, obstacle behind, he will reach his desired destination. By a little more effort, the traveler will enter into the honorable realm of longing for God's grace and mercy and land in the abode of divine love. He will be placed in the garden of intimacy with God. And in proximity to the, divine, to the divine, his heart will find expansion. In this station of subsistence to, in God. The traveler will spend the rest of his life in felicity and joy. His corporeal being will be in this world, but his heart will face the hereafter, waiting in contentment for the command and call of God. Day by day, he will, be, will detach himself from the people and the world, yearning for death. The longing and yearning for the higher spiritual realm will find perfection in his soul until the time when the messenger of God shall appear to him with good tidings for his spirit. Really, this is uh, what people, uh, in general, those who are not in this station, of felicity, those who uh, don't, those who know, I realize that uh, death is simply a passage uh, into the uh, afterlife, and a passage into uh, a life that is uh, eternal. And uh, definitely, the believer uh, is aspiring to be in uh, in paradise because this is really the uh, proximity. To be with God, and it's not a proximity as a physical uh, proximity, of course. The uh, the non-believer would like to uh, to ex to extend this life um, as much as possible. Uh, 
even as a, uh, a very, very sick person, people do not submit. They don't accept the fact that uh, there is death and you cannot really uh, expand this life forever. The search for... Uh, it is amazing how uh, even in uh, the epic of Gilgamesh, uh, Gilgamesh was searching for eternal life. He wanted, he wanted to be. Uh, he did not want to die. As simple as that. And uh, after all these thousands of years, the epic of Gilgamesh is the oldest, uh, you know, hum human epic. At least the, we did not, as humans, find uh, anything older. It's a, a wonderful uh, story that reflects. Uh, uh, human anguish, I would, uh, I would say, but the uh, the problem is that it's not only Gilgamesh who is seeking uh, eternal life uh, here, not really in the hereafter. It's almost every human being, those who freeze themselves, deep freeze immediately after death, thinking that medicine will develop one day to a degree that they will uh, revive them here. It's a silly idea that's very costly. Well, and all these uh, uh, operations that people do simply to uh, remain uh, useful. The longing and yearning for the higher spiritual realm will find perfection in his soul until the time when the messengers of God shall appear to him with good tidings for his spirit, they will transfer him in joy and happiness to settle in God's presence in the garden of paradise, the abode of annihilation and death. His weak and poor soul shall receive the kingdom of God and great bounties. Really, the um, um, uh, English never captures the uh, beauty of the Arabic text, but uh, what am I going to do? Um, I think there is a major uh, uh, mistake here. The major mistake in translation. This is why I took my uh, time, really. Uh, the abode of annihilation and death? Not really. I mean, the uh, the Arabic is uh, it says that, uh, uh, of course, the uh, the messengers of, uh, uh, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they uh, come to him with. Uh, with good tidings, with, uh, you know, really it's a very pleasing encounter. Rawhan wa Rayhan, even at, uh, the, in one, the, the, the perfume really of the encounter that's missing in the English. But the, uh, the, the Arabic, it's uh, the, uh, the Russell, the, the Russell here, we talk really about the, uh, the angels. They are the ones that are going to uh, transfer uh, the uh, the wayfarer, every human being really. But here we talk about the uh, worshippers, uh, the uh, the true believers. Yes, and uh, in fact, in in Arabic, it does talk about uh, the right at the end of the just before that that the uh, this uh, this human being who is in a state of felicity <coughs> will be awaiting the male al barid and barid really the male is takes one package from one place to the other an envelope from here to there but in this case they transfer the soul uh, and really it's the uh, angel of uh, of death and uh, no, it's not the uh, realm of uh, 
if we talk about the presence in the garden of paradise the abode of annihilation and death it no it doesn't work that's not the english the arabic uh, one should ignore this uh, phrase uh, as such at any rate his weak and poor soul shall receive the kingdom of god and great bounties god majestic and and high is he will grant him more rewards day by day and honor him to such an extent that words cannot describe how eternally happy is such a wayfarer and how great is his fortune yes and how great is his fortune what a virtuous and great slave he shall become forever the blessed he is you see that in the, the Arabic is really Quranic and the English is, is English. May we be God, majestic and most high to grant you, us and all brothers in religion, this blessing and to make us indebted to his generosity. May he not place us among those who just hear the description of his generosity or participate in spiritual dance or merely hear for him may he not use the knowledge he granted us against us on the day of judgment and may he grant us success in putting our knowledge into action as he likes and pleases verily he is the most merciful and the most generous and greetings and honor to our master muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his progeny yes this is the way that God Most High has inspired me on the path of worship, the essence of which includes seven valleys, Aqabat really, again, obstacles, they are the valleys of knowledge, ilm, repentance, tawbah, barriers, awaiq, accidents, awarad, impulses and desires, bawaith, factors that corrupt and destroy prayer, awadih, and finally praise and gratitude, hamd wa shukr. With the completion of this discourse, the path of the worshippers to paradise will become complete. God willing, we shall discuss each of these valleys in detail in single chapters that will include the purposeful anecdotes. He is the possessor of success and steadfastness with his grace. There is no power nor strength save in God, exalted and majestic is he. Allah subhanahu wa liyu tawfiq wa tasdeed bimannih wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah al-aliyya al-azim. Chapter 1 on the valley of knowledge, on the obstacle, on the aqaba of knowledge. The Imam al Ghazali already uh, prayed that this knowledge will, be, will not be used against us. And this is uh, knowledge is uh, in every respect, every true knowledge should be used to, whether it's basically for religious purposes or what we call. Um, for mundane purposes, if it's true, then you should apply it. If you, if if the scholars, if the physicians say that you should not, the biologists, the scientists, if they say don't do this, then don't. So now you know it becomes your responsibility. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling you, don't do this, don't approach this, don't be in the company of those, stay away from haram. You know then. This is the meaning of the knowledge being held against you and the, the obligations, the duties. Do this, okay? Whether it's the, uh, the five daily prayers or basically fasting Ramadan, of course. Uh, the, uh, we don't talk about those who have uh, permission to, uh, to not fast because they are uh, very uh, sick, for example. We don't talk about children. We don't talk about... Travelers, we talk about, you know, the people under normal circumstances. Once you know, you should apply in your life.
So this first obstacle is that of knowledge or seeker of salvation and worship. With the help of God, I say that it is your duty to acquire knowledge. So the first thing, it is your duty. Of course, uh, if people are told to, uh, if you seek knowledge, if you seek this particular knowledge, we'll give you $1 million. Like seek knowledge for one year and we'll give you $1 million. Definitely will say yes. They say yes not to knowledge uh, as a value in itself, but they say yes to the one million dollars. Well, here we have knowledge that brings you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is no comparison. There is no comparison. And in fact, if you, uh, if uh, not only knowledge, even when you apply this knowledge in practice, worship, truly becoming a worshiper, sub submitting yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you say to your wife, uh, I have an offer. If I work two, two years, day and night, of course you will sleep a little bit. Uh, at the end of these two years, I'm going to be granted $10 million. She will say, go ahead, I will wait for you. Okay, now, really, you would like to hold the hand of your wife and your children and your parents and everybody that you love and your friends and you'd like to hold their hands you'd like to be with them in paradise inshallah it's worth it it's worth it it's uh, it's in vain if we uh, if we go the other way uh, around i think that uh, Obviously, the value of knowledge, uh, it cannot be quantified. Our seeker of salvation and worship, with the help of God, I say that it is your duty to acquire knowledge. Knowledge is like a pole around which everything revolves. Know that knowledge and faith are two essences upon which everything is based. What you see or hear in the writings of authors and teacher, teachings of teachers and the advice and guidance of preachers indeed god majestic and glorious is he sent down all messengers and scriptures for the sake of faith and knowledge heaven earth earth's inhabitants and all creatures that reside between them were created for the sake of knowledge and faith <clears throat> reflect on these two verses as god says it is god who created seven heavens and of earth their like between them the command descending that you may know that God is powerful over everything and that God encompasses everything in knowledge. Allah who is the one 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 who is in fact, there is a, a very small uh, comment of Imam al-Ghazali. It's a very beautiful comment. He says, وَكَفَى بِهَذِي الْآيَةِ دَلِيلًا عَلَى شَرَفِ الْعِلْمِ لَا سِيَمَا عِلْمِ التَّوْحِيدِ Yes, it's uh, very, very uh, noble. It's very noble that uh, you would uh, seek, uh, that you would seek knowledge, that... Uh, it's um, it's uh, it's an honor that one cannot underestimate. And Imam Ghazali says, especially the uh, the knowledge of uh, of Tawheed. This this comment is missing in the uh, English. Inshallah, we'll start with the uh, second verse uh, uh, tomorrow, which is very uh, very known to all of us. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Verily, I uh, have not created the uh, the jinn and the and the human beings except to uh, worship me to serve Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, which is always to our own benefit. For Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not benefit from anything that we uh, we do. Subhanakallah, wa hamdik, nashadu an tasafiruka wa tubliq. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.